Now that you know how a decision tree is being built and how to pick the best splits at each iteration, you might have wondered, but I can just keep splitting until I have a decision tree that perfectly predicts my training dataset. Well, this is indeed very true if you keep adding rules and expanding a tree until every leaf of the tree only contains a single class. In the worst case, we can just add as many rules such that each leaf only contains one data point, in which case we will always be 100% accurate for our training data. We have talked about a concept in module 3, which describes exactly this problem. Do you remember what it's called? If you said overfitting, you are entirely on point. Due to the design of a decision tree and the possibility of it splitting until we separated basically every single data point of our dataset, decision trees are very vulnerable to overfitting. As a consequence, this means that we are most likely rather bad at generalizing. New unseen data points have a high chance of getting misclassified. We have also talked about regularization to tackle the problem of overfitting. But how does this look like in a decision tree? We cannot simply add a regression term to a search tree, can we? Well, not really. But luckily, in the case of decision trees, we have very simple tools available to avoid overfitting. We have two options available. Either we try to avoid overfitting during training, or we alter our tree after training. Let's first look at option 1. As we have discussed, overfitting in a decision tree stems from the algorithm creating more and more and more splits, until we reach a perfect classification. A very simple and intuitive way to limit this behavior is to just limit the number of splits our algorithm creates. As an example, we could just say, hey, let's stop after 10 splits. In some cases, however, this might lead to a very unbalanced tree, where one branch of the tree is basically taking all of the splits, and the other one is left with just a single leaf. One way to overcome this limitation is to limit the depth of the tree. This means that as soon as one branch of the tree has hit the defined depth, we will no longer expand it. Other branches, which are shorter, might still be explored, however, creating a potentially better model than just limiting the number of overall splits. Now you might say that this could also lead to some splits containing a very big number of our data points, while others only contain a handful. Luckily for us, there is also a solution for this one. Another parameter, tree depth and number of splits are tunable parameters of our model, would be the minimum number of data points per leaf. This means that once we introduce a new split, we check how many data points are contained in each of the subsets created by the split. If any of the resulting splits contains less than the minimum number that you have defined, we stop at the previous split, meaning that we stop expanding the branch of the tree. Alright, so far quite simple, isn't it? But what about the strategy to alter the tree after training I have mentioned? Ideally, you would want to change the parameters mentioned above to avoid overfitting already during training. But what stops you from applying the same ideas afterwards? What I mean is pruning a tree after you have built it. Pruning means that we will quite literally cut off some of the branches of our tree. And we can do this based on any of the ideas I have talked about before, which are used during training. But then why not just use them after training? We could also prune randomly by just randomly selecting some branches and getting rid of them. The randomness can be a nice additional factor to avoid overfitting as the during the training strategies are affected by how your dataset looks like. Generally, however, tuning those parameters will achieve a good model already in terms of reducing overfitting. Random pruning could also cut off important branches, describing a good pattern of your data. So, as with any of the topics we are talking about, there is no one-fits-all solution and you will have to experiment yourself with different parameter settings to find the best model for your task.